So what's going on guys welcome back to the channel and today we are talking about five most shocking moments in ufc history and i have to start by saying thank you guys so much for all the support it's been absolutely incredible five away from two thousand subscribers i really wasn't for sure when it would happen and honestly it, if it would happen youtube's algorithm is a finicky little thing uh, but again, thank you guys so much. If you are new here, subscribe, like, and comment. I try to respond to everybody that I can, of course, you know. But as always, let's get right into the video. So five most shocking moments in UFC history. It can be a decision. It can be a crazy knockout. It can be a, a debut that went fantastic. It can be a challenger stepping out, stepping up on short notice, shocking the world. And, you know, for me personally, Number five is just from one of one of a fight I had seen early on my UFC experience, and that to me has to be Scott Smith versus Pete Sell. Now, if you watch the fight, these fighters aren't great fighters, but Scott Smith was known for being able to take a beating and find his way back later in his career. That kind of went away a little bit, as it typically does with those types of fighters. But in this moment, uh, he also had one against Kung Lee that was awesome. But in this moment, it was awesome. There's the highlights of it everywhere. You can find it on YouTube. The 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 the, the shot and the finish. Pete Sell throws a left a left hook straight to the body. It was beautiful how he set it up. Uh, he hits uh, Scott Smith to the body. Scott crumbles forward, holding his ribs, and then all of a sudden Pete Smith, Pete Sell goes, "All right, let's let's run after this man." Runs after him and gets caught with the right hand and gets KO'd. It was absolutely beautiful and not only did he ko him after he ko's him, he falls backwards and holds his rib as he's hurt uh it was unbelievable it shocked me um i hadn't really seen a whole lot of things like that when i had first seen that obviously i had been watching fights before then and all that but as you get older you realize these moments and you realize all the all, all the how crazy that is how did he come back how was he able to do that and honestly after all of those years, we've never seen anything really like it before. We've seen guys get hurt, you know, to the chin, but never really seen somebody get hurt to the body and then KO somebody. So to me, it was pretty damn unbelievable. And number four to me, another one is by my favorite fighter of all time, Cowboy Cerrone versus Rick Story. Now this fight kind it, it went like I thought it would. Uh, with Rick Story being powerful, uh, Donald Cerrone not really looking to trade necessarily with the Story because he has big hooks, but he's not a great striker, I would say. Um, and Cowboy hits him with this beautiful straight to the body, uh, straight uh, left hand to the chin, head kick, and then he ends up finishing him. It was beautiful. Um, and to me, it was absolutely shocking. It was so crazy. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And, you know... Personally, being a fan of Cowboy, you never necessarily know which version you're going to get of Cowboy. And that was a reality with it. Not that it was good, but that's what it was. You know, if he showed up, I was like, oh, we're in for a good night. And if he didn't, I was sad. Because, again, he's my favorite fighter of all time. For reasons I don't think I need to explain. If, I, if you guys want an explanation, if you want a video on my favorite fighter of all time, why he's my favorite... Put it down there in the comment section. We'll talk about it. No issue talking about that. But number three for me is Anderson Silva versus Chris Lieben. Now, again, Anderson Silva versus Chris Lieben wasn't shocking in the fact that, oh, my God, Anderson Silva knocked out Chris Lieben. Nah, it was pretty expected. What was shocking about it was just how brilliant it was that that was the start because before that he was like a eh, decent fighter been caught a couple times not great considered retirement actually was talked into still fighting got to the ufc so again it was it, it was shocking the way he was able to do it not that he was able to do it but the way he was able to do it was crazy just absolutely crazy and chris Lieben had been known to be able to take a shot you know, not saying that he should have been able to take Anderson's shots because he was accurate. That was the biggest difference. You know, a lot of the guys that leave him had fought would hit him in the temple, hit him in the chin, but wouldn't be accurate necessarily with the follow-up punches. Like Terry Martin hurt him numerous times in their three-round fight. Um, and then at the last second, catches him with a big right hand. 
and then kind of got um um what is it called kind of got reckless and actually being knocked out himself which was a pretty awesome moment in its right in its own right and then next number two pretty sure yeah number two is uh edwin anderson broke his leg against chris Levin. to me that was crazy because there's aura around anderson and as a kid i didn't necessarily love anderson silva i didn't understand that it's harder to finish these guys it's it's not easy so as a kid thinking oh he's going to a decision line he's not the greatest you got to be finishing these guys come on and as i'm older i'm like nah that's a stupid way to think that's not true because you can't finish every single person you fight that's an insane thing to happen now there have been guys that have done it sure they don't really typically last they live by the sword and they die by the sword ask pat barry that i love pat barry as a fighter some weird stuff personally but as a fighter like him um fun um yeah but anderson silva breaking his leg and the fight that he was actually winning and the reason why he loses because he showboats again when he's winning and he's kind of picking chris apart yeah i don't know if people are going to like that take but yeah and then number one for me has to be tj dillashaw beating Hemant Rao. Now, people are going to say, no, there's no way that's true. No, 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 no. Like, yeah. Yeah. Because personally, why it's my number one most shocking UFC moment in history is because is because he was such an underdog. I think he was like a 1,200 underdog. He was 1,100 or something like that. He was a stupidly high underdog. Um, he was a 10 and 2, 9 and 2 when he freaking um when he did this. Let's see exactly what he was. Let's 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 look. Because he was a very, very high underdog. Oh, uh, Benio Darius expects to uh, UFC offer him Dan Hooker. I love that. I love that. Okay, so TJ Dillashaw beats Hen and Burrell. He was 9 and 2. Back in 2014. Wild. Wild. Oh, let's not do that. Let's go to the uh, 173. Um, right here. So TJ Dillashaw was a plus 650. Henan Barral was a minus 1000. Okay. Fantastic. Um, yeah, he, he plus 650 is crazy. And honestly, I think before that it was even higher. Um I think it went down a little bit as the fight got closer and closer and closer and closer. And, you know, three and a half inch reach advantage for Henan Barrow. Speed probably advantage. Nobody expected Henan Barrow to get absolutely outclassed. Now, props to Henan Barrow because he survived the onslaught and then ended up being finished later in the fight. It never was really competitive. But credit to him for still showing championship heart, championship material, and weathering it. Still getting finished, but still, he didn't, you know, go away as soon as adversity came at him. He he still kept going out there at the end, at the beginning of the rounds, and still trying to win. So credit to him for sure. But and then Hendon Brow, he was thirty one and thirty two and one, fell to thirty two and two at that point. Okay, you want to know his record now? Thirty four and ten. He went two and eight since then. Two and nine. If you take that fight away, if you take that fight with the uh, 11 fights afterwards. That is wild. The decline. And then the second fight when they fought again, the combination of TJ Dillashaw landed on him was one of the most beautiful combinations I've ever seen. And the credit, again, to Burrell for withstanding that combination, never going down. He was done. There was no question about that. Donezo. But... He still stood up, you know, sat on that cage while taking a beating. And he was never seen again. TJ Dillashaw took his soul forever. Um, but that to me is my number one craziest moment in UFC history. Now, UFC 300, that Gaethje Holloway fight, awesome. But it's not in my shocking moments because I wasn't shocked. Wasn't shocked. I knew. I talked about it. 
that Max was going to finish him. I didn't expect to finish him with the one second left, but I expected him to finish him. So it's not in my shocking moments. You know, so again, thank you guys so much. Subscribe to the channel if you are new here. Comments down below. Let your guys' top five shocking moments in UFC history are. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Put down some video ideas down in the comment section as well. And as always, guys, you know what it is.